So here's that big theorem that I've been talking about, the plus-minus theorem. <clears throat> Take a non-empty set of vectors inside your vector space V and call it S. The first part says if S is a linearly independent and a vector V is not in the span of S, then the set that we can create by inserting V into S is still going to be linearly independent. And the second part of the plus-minus theorem deals with spanning sets. If V happens to be in S um, and V is expressible as a linear combination of other vectors that are in S, then the set created by removing V from S, we call that set S prime, satisfies this equation, that the span of S is equal to the span of S prime. So by removing V from S, we don't affect the span of that set of vectors. So let's take a look at the proof of the plus-minus theorem. To prove part one, we're going to start by writing out the linearly independent set S. It's going to consist of the vectors V1 all the way up to Vn. Next, we take a vector V that's inside of our vector space, but V satisfies the property that it's not inside the span of these vectors in S. Next, we're going to set up a linear independence equation where all of the V's are inside. So we have A1, V1, A2, V2, all the way up to An, Vn. And at the end, we're going to tack on An plus 1 times our vector V. And here's where we got to use a little bit of logic. This coefficient An plus 1 must be equal to 0. Otherwise, we'd be able to write V as a linear combination of some of these other vectors that are inside S. Okay, that would mean that V is inside the span of S. Because a n plus 1 is equal to 0, our original equation simplifies to this one. And we know that S is a linearly independent set, so all of these coefficients a1 all the way up to a n must be equal to 0 now. And when we put it all together, we have that all of the coefficients a1 all the way up to a n plus 1 in our original equation were equal to 0. And this tells us that this set v1 to vn and v added inside of this set is linearly independent. And here's how we're going to set up for part 2 of the plus-minus theorem proof. I mean, first of all, I'm going to write down those two sets s and s prime. So here S is V1 up to Vn plus an extra vector V. And S prime is the set where we remove the vector V. So we only have the vectors V1 up to Vn. Here we're allowed to assume that the vector V is a linear combination of the other vectors in S. And then we start. So we're going to say that W is inside the span of S. If W is inside the span of S, then it can be expressed as a linear combination of the vectors V1 up to Vn plus the vector V. So that's where the B1, V1, B2, V2, Bn, Vn, Bn plus 1, V come from. We write W as a linear combination of those vectors inside of S. So next we do a substitution. We know that the vector V is a linear combination of the vectors V1 to Vn. So I'm going to substitute that in for V over on the right-hand side. And then what we do is we recollect terms. So the coefficient in front of V1 here comes from B1 and then Bn plus 1 times A1. And then the coefficient in front of the Vn would be Bn, Bn plus 1, An. So what we've actually done is we've expressed the vector w as a linear combination of vectors in S prime. So this tells us that the vector w is inside of the span of S prime. Or we could say that when we start with a vector in the span of S, we can show that we end up getting a vector inside the span of S prime. So often we'll say that the span of S is contained inside the span of S prime.
And we have to do the argument in the reverse direction as well. So next we'll consider a w that's inside the span of s prime. That means that we can express w as a linear combination of the vectors v1 to vn. But clearly this means that w is inside the span of s because the vectors v1 to vn are inside of s. In fact, just to make it a little more clear, we could tack on here 0 times v. So now we have every single vector inside of this set s. So it is a linear combination of the vectors inside of s. So because w is inside the span of s, this tells us that the span of s prime is contained inside the span of s, or that these two spans are actually equal to each other.